Hello Matrix, and welcome to the 14th video on Calculus, brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video, we will continue looking at exam questions. Example number one. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this whole question, and then we'll do it together. They've asked you to determine the derivative from first principles. So remember with first principles you have to use that formula. You get f of x plus h, you minus f of x, divided by h, and you take the limit as h tends to zero. Get a common denominator on the top. Remember that dividing by h is the same as multiplying by 1 over h. Multiply the brackets at the top. Collect together like terms. The h's cancel. And then what you do is you make h tend to 0 and you get an answer of minus 2 over x squared. Now remember you can check your answer very easily. So there's the original. Use the rules to check your answer, but remember it is a check only because you have to do it this long method because they said determine from first principles. Question 1.2.1, they ask you for dy by dx. The first thing I do is factorize the trinomial and then the 3x minus 1 cancels. I now take the derivative of 4x plus 3 and I get an answer of 4. 1.2.2 Remember a square root can be written as x to the half. I divide x squared into each of the terms on the top and then I take the derivative. Derivative of x to the half is there. Remember the derivative of a constant is 0 and the derivative of that term is there. And then all I do is I sort out the negative exponents. One point three, they asked me to determine the value of a if the inverse when x is eight is equal to the derivative when x is four. So I've got to think carefully with this one. How do I get the inverse? Well, remember with the inverse, in place of y goes x, and in place of x goes y, including with the condition. So y squared is equal to x over a, and because y is positive, it means when I get what y is equal to, I have the positive square root only. So there's the formula for the inverse. If I take the derivative of h of x, I get the derivative to be 2ax. Now I've been told that the inverse when x is 8 is equal to the derivative when x is 4. So there's the inverse when x is 8. There's the derivative when x is 4. Square both sides and solve for a. Example number two is the cubic graphs question. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we'll do it together. 2.1, they asked you to determine the x-intercept. So remember to find x-intercepts you make y equal to zero. Take out a common factor. The trinomial doesn't factorize so you will need to use the formula to solve for x and you will discover that you get the square root of a negative, which means there is only one x-intercept at x equals zero. Two point two asks you to determine the coordinates of the turning point. So remember to get turning points you take the derivative and you let it equal zero. Solve and you get two values for x. Substitute them both back into the original equation and you get the coordinates of the two turning points. Two 
2.3 asks you to sketch the graph. You know the x-intercept is zero. You've got the coordinates of both turning points. You know a is positive, so you know the shape of the graph. And there is the graph of f of x. Two point four asks for which values of x is the derivative negative. Now remember, if you want the derivative to be negative, you want to know where is the graph sloping down, and it's sloping down between the two turning points. In other words, when x is greater than two thirds, less than one. Two point five for which values of x is f of x concave up. Now remember, concave up. Your second derivative is positive, so I get the second derivative. I make it greater than zero, and I get that x must be greater than five over six. Have a look at your graph. Does that make sense? Well, five over six is between the two turning points, and from there on, my graph is concave up. Example number three is the optimization question. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try it yourself, and then we'll do it together. The first question says to you that the volume of a cylinder is six centimeters cubed, and they want you to write down h in terms of r. Now the volume of a cylinder, the formula is pi r squared h. So that's equal to 6. Make h the subject of the formula, and I get that h is equal to 6 over pi r squared. 3.2 asks me to get the total surface area. Now, what I've got here is the following. The surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, and there are 10 of each of them. Remember, I got that h was equal to 6 over pi r squared in the previous question, and all that remains for me to do is simplify and multiply out and get it into the form that they asked me for. The last question asks you to determine the value of R so that you will use the least amount of paint. In other words, I want to make the surface area a minimum. Well, how do I make it a minimum? I take the derivative and I make it equal to zero. But first, I've got to sort out the fraction. There's my derivative. I make it equal to zero and I solve for R. You should now be able to do the calculus section in an exam paper. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.